Hey everybody, it's finally Friday. No, I'm not going to call my devotions and Bible studies by a, a new name, finally Friday, but it is finally Friday. And as I'm looking over the scripture passages for this Sunday, I'm sitting in one of my favorite rooms down at church. This is the confirmation room. Unfortunately, we're not using it right now because we've called off our confirmation classes for the year simply because of the issues surrounding our pandemic. And well, just to kind of look around, you see that we got these nice cushy chairs in here and we'll be sitting on top of each other and that's not what we're supposed to do. And even being out in the other room where we're all spread out, it's just not going to happen right now. We're going to play it safe. But anyhow, I was looking over the text for this coming Sunday from Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And one thing you need to know is that you might pick up a, a Bible study book or another book and it talks about, well, we don't know if Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians. It's really not his style and his language which is all true. But don't get all freaked out by that because it, it does say Paul's letter to the Ephesians and he even says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, as he's starting it. There was a, a lot of things that happened back in Paul's day that were okay to do. One of them was a disciple might use Paul's name and write off a letter to a church or would gather together some of Paul's works and kind of um, put them together and send that off as a letter and would do it under the pen name of Paul. So <clears throat> don't worry about that, okay? That was perfectly acceptable back then. We don't really like doing that now, although we hear of ghostwriters, right? Yeah, we, we still have that sort of going on nowadays. But anyhow, regardless, it is Paul's thoughts and it is a lot of what he taught that was put together, at the very least, in this letter to the Ephesians. And what's interesting in, in it is that Paul, this is typical of Paul now, he was terrible with run-on sentences. He just went on and on forever. And in the first chapter, from verse 3 through verse 14, which is some pretty important stuff to read, it's one run-off run-on sentence in the Greek. I mean, it just goes on forever. There are, my passage that I have right here in front of me is the Revised Standard Version, and it breaks it down into six sentences. And even in there, there's a couple of semicolons. So you could say seven or eight sentences altogether. One run-on sentence in the Greek. Oh, Paul, you would not make it today in English 101. But, hey, let's get down to what's really happening here real quick. Paul is talking about Jesus. He's talking about what God has done in Jesus, which is he's reconciled the world to himself. And as he's done that, Jesus is now present among us as us. The, we are now the living body of Christ. And it's a beautiful, beautiful way to summarize what this coming Sunday is all about. The reign of Christ, Christ the King Sunday. We see Jesus at work yet through you and through me here on this earth. Just want to read a part of this. God put this power, meaning um, the power for us as Christians, to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus is here. Jesus is among us through you and through me. That makes it a pretty cool thing. It also puts a bit of a responsibility on us because now what are we doing? 
What are we doing to share the love of God, to share the love of Christ, to share forgiveness and grace and peace and mercy? All right. We can't take those things for granted. We are the light bearers in this world. In the baptismal service that we have, at the very end is handed a candle to each of the sponsors. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is what is spoken to the one being baptized, but it's also a reminder to you and to me who we are. We are children of God, and what are we to do? Let our lights shine, because indeed, it's through us that people see Jesus. Well, before we go, I just want to mention that coming up in December, December the 1st, I'm going to start a, something a little bit different. It's in addition to these, these little talks that we have together. And I know these sometimes run into 9, 10, 11 minutes long. And some people say, what are you doing? Giving us another sermon? Yeah, basically what I'm doing is I've, I've kind of turned it into a, a mini Bible study as well as a devotional time. But I'm going to start something new every day as well. In addition to this, it's going to be called, Have You Got a Minute? And I'm going to have the clock sitting right in front of me. And I have one minute to say what I need to say. Just another way to kind of brighten up your day, get you energized, but give you a real quick shot of the gospel message, the gospel of love, the, the good news that comes from everywhere in scripture for you and for me. God's blessings be with you. Have a great and awesome Friday.